Hi everyone, welcome to another video on panel clustering with Evolute Tools. I'm Florin and in the next few minutes I will show you some new things we added to the clustering functionality. I will work on the blob model today. Unfortunately, this mesh was not at all optimized with any clustering in mind. No ideal edge length optimization, no ball packing, nothing like that. It was only optimized for fairness and some coplanarity constraints, so we should not expect to have too many similar panels. Speaking of, we have 2240 panels, so let's see what the clustering can do. Uh, in order to start the clustering, I will first extract the face borders. I have the faces mode active. Alright, we're good to go. Let's start selecting all the faces. A new thing is now possible regarding the input tolerances. Specifically, you can now enter negative numbers as you can see here. A negative number represents an offset towards the inside of the panel while a positive number is an outside offset. This means you can design your panel-to-panel -panel gap from the start as there are not too many cases where your panels will meet edge-to-edge. -edge. And the actual difference between the inside and outside tolerance is the margin in which the optimizer can fit repeatable panels. I will leave the dots on, so let's run it and check out the results. Great, here are the dots representing groups of repetitive panels. A bit hard for us to visualize for this video, so I prepared another visualization method. Um, let's get rid of the dots and look at it. So we found 1436 unique panels compared to 2240 from before. Um, the gray panels are the unique ones and the colored groups uh, represent, of course, the repetitive groups of panels. It is easy to have a much better result if your mesh was optimized towards panel repetitiveness from the start, like ideal edge length optimization, let's say. But still, even with such a quick and unique mesh, we can save quite a lot by fitting repetitive panels as you have just seen. Um, the groups are distributed almost randomly, wherever it just managed to fit in. We can have a closer look at the gaps, it's probably even better from the inside, and they look pretty consistent. So normally these gaps would be covered by pressure plates or pressure caps, profiles, things like that, just assemblies which are normally part of the facade structure. Alright, thanks for watching and please don't hesitate to send us your feedback.